Uh, the book of Jonah, he's a minor prophet in the Old Testament, towards the end of the Old Testament, uh, uh, before Psalms in that area. So we have the book of Jonah, and the thing about the book of Jonah, it's not that long. It's only four chapters, 48 verses. But it's a very interesting story about Jonah. And any of us that have children, and we read to them uh, on the children uh, story Bible, will all recognize that Jonah was uh, quite a guy in his own respect, meaning that God called him to do something, and he just didn't want to do it. Pretty much like us today. How about that one? And me included. <clears throat> so if, we, if we're looking in our Bibles here, uh, the heading of the first chapter says, Jonah runs from his mission. And it says, And now the word of Adonai, which is another name for the Lord, came to Jonah. And it said, Rise and go to the great seat of Nineveh and call out to her, for their evil has risen before me. So here we go. Well, Jonah, he was a prophet of God. Okay, should he be running anywhere other than doing the Lord's will? That's one thing that sort of stuck in my mind. This Jonah, he actually has a book in the Bible, but yet he's not doing anything that he's supposed to be doing. Here again, much like the humans that we could be us. God tells us something, we're going the other way. But God tells him to go to the great city of Nineveh. So you're sitting there thinking, okay, what's the big deal? Why just doesn't he go? Well, Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. Well, guess who Assyria was? They were enemies of the Israelites. Jonah was a prophet. He wanted, uh, God wanted him to do certain things as a prophet. And you, we always think of prophets, of pretty good guys. Well, when you really do the research in Jonah, he was critical, complained. I don't even, I don't know why God really chose him. But the thing was, the story really isn't about Jonah it's about God's compassion and his mercy. Because if I was God and Jonah did what he did, uh, I would have had to fire him. <clears throat> he wouldn't be working for me anymore. So Jonah, he's, uh, God says, go to great city of Nineveh. Um, if you can picture in your mind sort of a, I don't have it all, on an illustrated board, but Jonah was in Israel, and where Nineveh was was to the east and north. It was like around, they say, between five and 600 miles. We'll say 550 miles, so he had to go there. The Bible doesn't give us a timeline. So what happens to Jonah? We all sort of know from the Bible story Jonah goes down to the port city of Joppa, which was in Israel. He gets on a boat, which is, uh, God says, hey, go this way. And Jonah goes that way. He goes as far as he can. He gets on a boat that's going, what's your Bible? Well, it's a place called Tarshish. And, and Tarshish Many of us that know anything about geography, the Mediterranean Sea, well, Tarsus I'm, I'll be, was all the way over in Spain. It was as far of a city as you could go. Can you imagine that? As far as, it's, we're not going to Claysville, we're going to Seattle, Washington. <laughs> you see? And w where Tarsus is, is like 2,500 miles away. He gets on a boat. It says he pays. He gets on a boat, and there, I'm sailing away. Well, 
Here's a great example of you can't run from God. Can any of us run from God? Has anybody of us tried to run from God? Have we? What happened? Not too, doesn't work. Well, Jonah thought, you know what? If I get on a boat, I get out in the, in the Mediterranean Sea here, and I could sail, God will never find me. Wow. <laughs> if it, uh, it really didn't work out that way. So, uh, Jonah, a great storm arose, it says. It doesn't really give us a timeline, but most people that know things say that it wasn't a very short time this great storm rose. So where's Jonah? He's, he's hiding down in the bow of the ship, and he's He's sleeping. And these men that are tending the ship, ship, the sailors and everybody, and they are, they're franicking. They're, and they are praying each one to their own God, the Bible says. Now, obviously, they were pagan. They didn't believe in the God that Jonah did. And he was, and they were praying and like, what are we, we going to do? They start throwing their cargo overboard to lighten the ship because they're thinking, well, the ship is going down. That's it. We're done. So they go down and they said the captain of the ship or the, the term isn't used that way, but it basically captain comes to Jonah and say, hey, wake up, pray to your God that we're not drowned. So what happens? They, they, they do this thing. They cast lots. I tried to figure out exactly what that was. It could have been a different things. But anyway, Jonah pulled the shortest stick, so to speak. And there says, ah, it's your fault. <laughs> okay, the whole, everybody here is going to die. The ship is going to sink. And it's your fault. So Jonah knows you can't run from God, but he's still going to try. So he says, as we look further into the story, we can see that Jonas will just throw me overboard. Because he's, he's basically so disgusted with this whole being a prophet thing. Because he's not being obedient to what God wants him to do. He says, just throw me overboard and we'll just end it. It'll be better that way. Well, they actually, they had more sort of a religious sense than he did. They didn't want to do that. You know, so they tried to row back to the shore, to the shore. Well, that didn't work either. So guess what? Reluctantly, Noah, I'm sorry, not Noah, but he had a big boat too. <laughs> but Jonah, he gets thrown overboard. You figure that's the end of that, right? I mean, anybody, logically, that's the end of that, and uh, that's the end of Jonah. Well, it wasn't. So in, ver in uh, verse 1 of chapter 2, it says, now, now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. Wow. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I'm not sure exactly how all that worked. The Bible doesn't say that. I mean, it must have had air conditioning, heat, you know, oxygen, everything that he needed. Don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us that. But he said that God prepared a great fish and swallowed Jonah. And in the belly of this great fish, Jonah begins a prayer, a prayer of distress. He's still, he's still having a problem here. He still, ha he still has an issue. But let's just see what he says here. It says, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, For my distress I cried to you, Lord, and he answered me. From the belly of Shiloh 
which uh, is another word was actually being interpreted for hell. I cried for help and you heard my voice for you hurled me from the depths into the heart of the seas and currently swirled around me. All of your ways and all of your breakers swept over me. And I said, I have been banished from before your eyes, yet I will continue to look towards your holy temple. Sounds like he's on the right track. He's thanking the Lord. He says, I'm going to be looking to your holy temple all the time. The water surrounded me up to my soul. The, de the deep sea engulfs me. Reeds clung to my head. To the bottom of the mountains I went down. The earth with her bars was around me forever. Yet you brought me my life up from the pit. Adonai my God, which is another word meaning Lord, as my soul was fading from me, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer came to you towards your holy temple. Those who watch worthless, empty things forsake their mercy. But I, with a voice of thanks, will sacrifice to you that I vow I will pay. Salvation is from Adonai. Then the Adonai spoke to the fish and it vomited Jonah out unto dry land. That took three days. He had seaweed wrapped around his head. He was, he was fighting the Lord, but it took three days. And he, he finally came to some recollection of what was going on. Now, you're thinking to yourself, why just didn't he just go to Nineveh? Why get on a boat that's going to take him five times further than what he should have went? Well, he didn't like the Assyrians. He didn't like the Ninevites. Why? They were enemies of the, Isra the Israelites. They were enemies. And even at times, they had, uh, the Assyrians were uh, like the Roman Empire of their day. They were taxing Israel. They were fighting with them, warring with them. So he did not want to see them hear the word of the Lord. Now this was a prophet. So you can understand how, the, how God was sort of like, hey, you're a prophet. Well, he was okay in his own country. He was okay, he was okay speaking to his own people. But he didn't want to tell anybody else. That's the sad part, because we can see that. That how do we react sometimes today? Do, do we want to stretch ourselves and say, I really don't like that certain neighbor, but I, I really don't want to tell him or act friendly towards him. Well, if we're a Christian, we better. And I think we're all guilty to that to a certain point. But Jonah said, so I'm not going to go speak to those people. So it took a, took a great fish to bring him back. So Jonah <clears throat> obviously was disobedient. He ran from God. And I was trying to put a title on this, uh, this uh, sort of sermon. And it was like, I thought, king of the road. He thought he was king of his road. Okay? I'm not going to do... I'm going to be the king of my life. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm not going to Nineveh. I don't care what you say, God. Or you could title it, don't be that guy. Right? Don't be that guy. Don't be like Jonah, the complainer, the runner, the running man. We couldn't, he was a runner, man. The guy, the guy might, he could have been in the Olympics for God, running the other way. Am I right? Instead of him going towards God, he ran away. And he was running far away. So <clears throat> he was a complainer. He had his own opinion. Rut routinely questioned God. Became angry. And he it just... If everything that Jonah was is not what you want to be. And I, and I think it gives us a great contrast of so many times, obviously, in the Bible, we, we read about people who did the right thing. Well, Jonah was the guy that 
He didn't do the right thing. And if anything that we should learn, we should always try to do the right thing. So Jonah, he wanted to see the Syrians punished. He didn't want to see them come to, to know the Lord of salvation. And obviously he knew better than God. He lacked mercy, forgiveness, wanted revenge and bitterness in his heart. So I think we can look at this story and we can say, um, okay, don't be that guy. We got Jonah to show us not what to be. We were talking about in Sunday school bearing fruit. Um, I'm trying to figure out the fruit that Jonah had. I, don't, I didn't see too much fruit. He was uh, not doing what he should have been doing. Um, and, and I think all of us have been guilty at one time or another to, to be in that situation. Um, now, God gave him a plan that he was, that he, he was swallowed by this great fish. But in that, in that process... Uh, I wanted to, uh, I was thinking that Jonah, when things are going great, the world is all right. And it's us as humans today. When things are great, the world is great. When things are bad, when things are bad, guess what? As a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, things still should be great. But we have been sort of taught and our brains have to be adjusted through the good times or through the bad times. Who do we belong to? Amen. We belong to the Lord. We're reading, we, we are the sheep of his pasture, Psalms 103 says. We are the sheep of his pasture. He made us. We belong to him. It doesn't matter if we're going through good times or bad times. We're all going to go through bad times. And sad, sadly, a lot of times, life is made up of a lot of bad things. And every once in a while, we get some good in there. You know, like the Pirates win a game. You know? We're happy. We're happy for like a day. But you know what I'm saying. So we, we see that our attitude, Jonah had a bad attitude. <laughs> and it's funny because he has actually a book written with his name in the Bible. And this guy will just had a bad attitude. But there, there'll be some changes. St stick, stick with the story yet. So the great fish... It says, vomits him up on the dry ground. Can you imagine the people greeting him and they say, hey, just look at that big fish. And then all of a sudden the guy comes out, this fish vomits this guy out of the fish. He's got seaweed wrapped around him because it says that. And, and, yeah, and then he says, yeah, I've been in the fish for three days. I don't know how he knew that because, I mean, how could he tell time? Did he have it? His, his cell phone quit working. He didn't, he just didn't know. So he goes and reluctantly, he does go, he does go to Nineveh. Can you imagine this now? He gets, he gets thrown up on the seashore and he still has to go like about 550 miles to Nineveh. Now it doesn't say exactly the time frame here, but I'm kind of calculating in my mind how all this is trying to work out. I don't, it obviously, I mean, you're not driving a car or anything. You're on a camel or you're walking. But it's going to take, it, it could take maybe 15 days to get there. Um, depends on how fast you walk. And I, I looked at the calculations. So it's, it's going to take at least two weeks. So he gets to Nineveh. And he, he's still not really happy about being there. Okay. He's, 
And he says that the city is a great city. He said it takes three days to walk across it. So that was quite a large city. And you figure he's going into the lion's den, right? Assyrians don't like Israelites. He's an Israelite prophet. So instead of him going and telling of God's mercy, let's see what he does say. God, God tells us. Um, it says here in 3, in uh, chapter 3, it says, Now the word of Adonai came to Jonah a second time. Now remember the first time he tells him to go to Nineveh. God hadn't spoken to him the second time until right now. And he says, rise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out to the proclamation what I am telling you. So Jonah rose and went to Nineveh. Wow, that's pretty good. He listened that time. And uh, Nineveh was a great city of God, the length of three-day journey across. So Jonah began to come into the city for one day journey, I guess he, he went in for one day. He cried out saying, I wish it would tell us more, but it does say, this is what he said. Another 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. That's it. 40 days, you guys are all going to be overthrown. That's it. Doesn't say God loves you. Uh, things are going to be great when you repent. He says that, Nineveh is done. Now he says that. But what happens next? What happens next? What does the king do? This is amazing because the people listened and Jonah didn't. He said these people believed. He goes, man, we're going to be destroyed. He said they, they started fasting and praying to the God of Jonah they put on sackcloth, which was uh, like a burlap sort of a thing to make them uncomfortable. They fasted, and they, they were repenting. They were, they were drawing close to God, saying, we're sorry, repent. This, this thing that I don't see here, which I'm not sure why, you never, this repenting, it's like you're going, to be, you're going to be overthrown in 40 days. Imagine if there was a prophet that came to us, came to your house and says, in 40 days you'll be getting right with God because this is going to be it. You're done. The whole great city. And these, these people got right with God. You know, that's usually the strange part because strange part, it usually doesn't happen that way. It's like people are hard-headed they're, they don't listen. Jonah was the great example. If anybody should have listened, it was Jonah. But see, his heart wasn't right. He was like, these are my enemies, God. I can't deal with them. What is this, this is showing that God's mercy is not only for the people of Jonah. They're for all people. They're for the Gentiles. They're for you. They're for me. The mercies of God are for us. Yes, God had a chosen people, which was the Israelites. But as Christians, we are now grafted in to God's belief uh, system. We are grafted into the Bible. Paul's great missionary journeys was to the Gentiles. It wasn't to the house of God, and he was a Jew, but he had a heart for the Gentiles. Now Jonah, as we can go on to see, so these people got right with God. God was going to spare them. Now my, my way of thinking was this when I was reading this. See what you think. Now if that's your enemy, wouldn't it be nice to get along with your enemies? That's what I'm thinking. You know, why fight with your enemies if God's going to change their heart? 
wouldn't you want to get along with them instead of fighting and carrying on? Jonah, man, he's like, I don't like these people. I want them out of here. There's 40, I can't wait until the 40 days are up. And God's going to destroy them. So what happens as we read the story is that they repent. They get right with the God, the, uh, the God of the universe. But what happens to Jonah? <laughs> In chapter 4, it says, Jonah's displeasure. He doesn't like it. Uh, somebody needs to, um, he needs to come to church service and get right with the Lord, it seems like to me. <laughs> Jonah. But it gives us a contrasting situation to see, even though Jonah did what he did, God still used him. And what God will use each and every one of us, the Bible says the callings of God are without reproach. If God has called you to do something, he doesn't change his mind and say, I'll use the other guy down the street, or I'll use somebody else in the church. If God has called you to do something, if God has called you, just like Jonah, God called him to go to Nineveh, he wasn't getting away from it. God called him. And I think that speaks to us today. Each and every one of us, if God has called us to do something and to be something, he is never going to let it go. Amen. Now, we can vote. We could be like Joan and say, no, don't think so. I don't want to be that guy. I want to do what the Lord, if the Lord has said to do something, that's who I want to do. Now, God is still trying to get a hold of Jonah's heart. So Jonah, he goes, and he goes out um, on, the city, on the city outskirts, and it says, uh, he was, uh, I'm sorry, he was, he sat there and he made a tent to cover himself. It says in verse 5 of 4, of uh, chapter 4, verse 5. So Jonah went out from the city and sat east of the city. And there he made a tent and sat under it in the shade until he saw what would happen. <laughs> he's like, oh, what's going to happen? Okay, he, he's apparently... Not sure what his mindset was, but I, I'm, I'm going to hang around for a while, right? I want to see what God's going to do. Well, obviously, they did repent. So he was ticked off about it. It displeased him. He didn't want to have the deal with these people anymore. They're my enemies. They've caused me a lot of problems, a lot of grief. So he makes this tent, and this is... And God was showing him something. God prepared a plant, and it grew up over his head to shade him. Now, this plant grew overnight. It shaded him. He says, but God, at the dawn, the next day, prepared a worm, and the worm came and ate the plant. And then he was really mad. Okay, the plant that, the plant that he didn't grow, that he didn't plant, now it's gone, but he still wants to complain. I guess you could say, entitled, Jonah the Complainer. <laughs> Complained about everything. So God spoke to him, and, and God said to Jonah, that's in verse 9, he goes, it is good for you to be angry about this plant. It is, it is he said, I'm angry enough to die. So Jonah, because a plant wasn't shading his head, he wanted to die. You ever know people like that? I mean, just the slightest thing. I mean, they just like go off. My dad was like that to a certain point. It was more than joking, but just the smallest thing, it just set him off. He was like a Jonah. 
we should be a little bit more tempered. Am I right? A little bit more tempered and those type of things. So this plant grows up, shades him. He's watching to see what's going to happen to the city. And all of a sudden, the next day, this worm that God sent ate the plant. And now Jonah wants to die. He just, that's it, I'm done. I want to die. But God, but Adonai said, you have pity on the plant for which you did no labor to make it grow. It appeared overnight and perished overnight. Shouldn't you have pity on Nineveh? So God really speaks to him. That's the third time. Shouldn't you have pity on Nineveh that had, and your Bible probably says, 120,000 people who don't know their right hand from their left as well as the many animals that it has. So God is trying to show him his compassion for people. These were still people, even though they weren't serving him at the time. In fact, this same <clears throat> judgment that was pronounced on Nineveh was the same type of language that God was speaking of Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and most of us know what happened there. Son of Gomorrah was wiped off the face of the earth. And even, even the Lord came down out of heaven to look at Sodom and Gomorrah and to see. He said that word came up from earth to see how bad Son of Gomorrah was. And God says, yep, it's pretty bad. So how are we, what is our attitude towards the people that sometimes we don't get along with? And, I, and obviously Jonah will preach to 120,000 people that were spared. So what is our attitude, our neighbors? And uh, I've told this story before. Uh, if I repeated myself, uh, I hope you understand. But I was working one place for a company. And... All of a sudden, everybody else got fired, and I was the only one that was still left. And they brought in new, new people, a new boss, new workers. Well, here, all of a sudden, I've been working there for so many years, and I was the outsider. Can you imagine that? Here I am putting in my time, like five, six years, and now I become automatically the outsider. And they did not like me. For whatever reason, they just didn't like me. Um, I was the outsider sort of like the Ninevites were to Jonah. And uh, the boss, I felt very strongly that uh, I was going to be fired. You know, just what things just weren't flowing my way. You know, what, you know what the Lord said to me? What did the Lord say to me, those that know the story? Did you pray for them? And it was like, what a revelation. The Bible says to pray for your enemies. Okay, so I'm thinking, wow, uh, that's a pretty good idea. I'm a Christian, and we're supposed to pray for those that don't like you, your enemies. And I felt like they were my enemies. And even though I wasn't causing any problems, I wasn't, you know, uh, starting fights and causing issues. I was tr trying to be a good Christian. God says, pray for them. Or he asked me, did you pray for them? And I was like, no, Lord. And then it was like, well, I think I should. So I did. I just, you know, say, Lord, just bless these people. And, you know, I don't know what the problem is, but I want to be a good Christian. Well, in a period of about two weeks, everything changed. It was the Lord. After two weeks, things just sort of just changed. There was... There was a change of heart with people, change of heart. And, and when I left there uh, on my own without being fired, then I, I got along with everybody. And that's the type of attitude we should have. Not, don't be that guy. Don't be like that Jonah complained and carried on and displeasured and like, Lord, I just want to die. Can you imagine that? He preached. People got saved, we'll use that language. He spoke to 120,000 people, they got saved, they came to the Lord, they got saved. Jonah was still mad, right? He was still mad. 
because he wanted judgment. He did not want to see God have mercy on them. He wanted judgment. He wanted them destroyed. He wanted them to be like a Sodom and Gomorrah, wiped off the face of the earth. Wow. So we have to, we have to check our hearts. Don't be that guy. Don't be that person. So I speak to you today. I'm also speaking to myself. Is when God speaks, we should listen. Now, obviously, we know that Jonah, he listened, but he, he, like, he said no. <laughs> God said go, and what did Jonah say? No. Yeah. So in that, we have to realize that, at least for myself as well, and I'm sure you as well, that the Lord... His ways are not difficult. Amen. Jesus says, my burden is light. And I will take care of you. Come unto me, all that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, Jonah had three days to get some rest in the belly of a large fish. Like I say, I don't know how that happened exactly. I just know what God says, and I just believe it. So I was just thinking today that each and every one of us can search our hearts. What type of attitudes do we have? I mean, we all can be critical at times. We, we all can be, uh, have, uh, say things that just aren't proper. Am I right? I'll be the first one. We have to check ourselves. How about if we end in prayer? Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And, and uh, you know, maybe if I may just ask if anyone, Father, just by maybe the slipping up a hand, say, you know what, I really need prayer. I'm really going through something with maybe my people at work, attitude that I may have, my neighbors, uh, doesn't matter, Lord, that you would bless each and every one of us, that you would speak to us today. Speak to us today. Draw us close to you. Let's not be that guy, that we are not a Jonah. We want to be like Jesus of Nazareth, that when God called him to go to the cross, he did not run, but he went willingly and laid his life down willingly before you. Bless these people today, Lord. Let their lives, Father, be a shining star in this dark world. And if anyone needs any special prayer, you're welcome to come up. We will pray with you. We will minister with you. And we'll just wait just a few seconds, anyone really needs to have just God really speak to them. Thank you, Father. You are such a good and wonderful God. Be with Pastor Tim. Bring him back safely, Lord, from his uh, job that he is working there. And we thank you and we praise you in your son's name. Amen.